Chapter 6, Clue of the Stamp The stairway of the dancing school building was steep. Though Nancy tried hard to save herself, she fell all the way to the bottom. Bruised and shaken, she lay there, stunned by her fall. Rushing down the steps was Mrs. Judson, who had given Nancy what seemed to be a premeditated push. As she reached the stricken girl, instead of helping her up, she stepped over her and disappeared out the doorway. Amazed and angry, Nancy was sure now that Mrs. Judson was an enemy, not a friend of the Fontaines. Nancy stood up, but when she put her weight on her right ankle, she winced with pain and fell back on the step. At this moment, George Fane burst through the street entrance. Seeing Nancy, she cried anxiously, Hypers! What's the matter? You're as white as a sheet. I'll be all right, Nancy said, but follow that woman who just went out of here. She's wearing a red and green flower dress and a red hat. Don't let her get away. I must know who she is and where she lives. George waited for no further explanation. Hurrying to the sidewalk, she spotted the woman almost halfway up the block, running. In the meantime, Nancy hopped up the stairway on her left foot, clutching the banister rail with both hands. As she reached the reception room, Bess, who was just dismissing her class, rushed over. Nancy, you're hurt, she cried. What happened? I'll be all right, Nancy assured her. I fell in the hall. Bess said goodbye to each of the children, then turned to Nancy and asked for the truth. When she heard what had really happened, she was furious. Why, that awful person, she exclaimed. Nancy, you're hurt more than you're letting on. Come into the dressing room and let me look at your ankle. She took off Nancy's shoe, put cold compresses on the swollen ankle, then bound it. By the time George returned, the pain had lessened considerably. Nancy turned and asked, Any luck? Yes and no, George replied. She went on to say that when Mrs. Judson had reached the corner of the street, she had slowed down to a walk. Then she had gone to the post office. She went to the general delivery window, George said, and asked for mail for Judson. The clerk handed her a letter. She took it over to one of the counters and ripped the envelope open. George said that whatever the contents of the letter were, they had upset Mrs. Judson very much. She got red in the face and I thought she was going to cry. She was so mad that she began to tear up the envelope. Angrily, she stuffed the letter and part of the envelope into her handbag. The part of the envelope with the stamp on it fell to the floor, and I picked it up as she turned toward the door. Good, said Nancy. But that was where my luck ended, said George. Suddenly, Mrs. Judson rushed outside and got into a taxi. I couldn't find another taxi, so I had no way of following her. Did you get the license number of the cab? Nancy asked. George shook her head. Sorry, I was looking for a taxi and forgot to get the number. Maybe there'll be a clue in the piece of envelope, said Nancy consolingly. George handed it over. The letter had been postmarked in Paris, France, and sent airmail. The notation, par avion, had been written by hand. Maybe the person who sent this is mixed up with the one who sent the Fontaines the warning note. Bess remarked. Nancy agreed it was possible, but there was certainly no way now to prove it. George said she would drive Nancy home in the convertible. I'll come back later and help you out, Bess, George told her cousin. Thank goodness you don't need a ballet dancer at the reception desk. On the way home, she stopped at Dr. Minton's office to have Nancy's ankle examined. He said that although the pain was intense, she had only suffered a mild strain. He strapped the ankle and told her that if she stayed off it as much as possible, it should be as good as new in a day or two. When Nancy reached home, Hannah Gruen was not only solicitous but angry. 
in a voice which she did not intend to carry upstairs to the Fontaines. She denounced the woman who had deliberately caused Nancy's accident. That dancing school isn't worth it, she said indignantly. As she hovered over Nancy on a couch in the living room, Hélène and Henri came hurrying down the stairs. They rushed in and expressed their sympathy and asked what had happened. Nancy tried to make light of the matter, but when she concluded her story, Hélène said, Nancy, I had no idea when you offered to help us that you would get into trouble. We just cannot permit it to continue. Our enemies are more dangerous than I thought. They even harm our friends. Henri was very sober. Finally, he said, Hélène and I will move out at once, Nancy, so that your life will not be endangered again. Nancy did not want the dancing couple to leave. She had grown very fond of them, and besides, she was determined not to give up the mystery so easily. Smiling, she said, Why, all I did was twist my ankle, and that woman may not have meant to push me off balance. In her anger, all she may have intended was to shove me out of her way. Hélène and Henri looked inquiringly at each other. Apparently, they were puzzled by Nancy's making so light of the matter. Before they had a chance to comment further, she asked them if they knew Mrs. Judson or had ever heard of her. They said no. Thinking the woman might be using an assumed name, Nancy described her carefully. I know no one who answers that description, said Hélène, and Henri nodded. At this point, George said she must return to the dancing school. After she had gone, Nancy took the piece of envelope with the French stamp from her pocketbook. The Fontaines did not recognize the handwriting. Do you think this is a good clue? Henri asked. I don't know, said Nancy, idly running her nail over the strange stamp. Suddenly, something on the envelope caught her eye, and she said to the housekeeper, Hannah, will you please steam the stamp from the envelope for me? The kindly woman went to the kitchen and returned in a few minutes, her eyes wide. It beats me how Nancy figures things out, she said. This time I had a clue, Nancy admitted. I noticed a dot of ink coming out from under the stamp. Well, it was a good idea, Hannah went on. There was a number under the stamp. What is it? The three asked eagerly. Dramatically, Hannah read off, 10561B24. Nancy was amazed. This was the same number which she had found inside the bisque figurine. Does that number mean something to you? Henri asked, noticing the expression of astonishment on the young sleuth's face. Nancy told the Fontaines about the statuette and the imposter who had sold it to the local jeweler. But what does all this mean? Ellen asked. I wish I knew, Nancy replied. Let's see if we can make anything out of this number. Does it look familiar to you? Brother and sister shook their heads. Henri asked, Nancy, do you think this is some sort of a code? Perhaps, Nancy admitted, and it may be in French. Let's see if we can figure it out. At Nancy's suggestion, Henri set up a card table and put chairs in place. Hannah brought a large pad of paper and three pencils. Then Nancy and the Fontaines began work on the puzzle. Have you ever tried solving a cryptogram? Nancy asked. A few times, Hélène answered. Good. Then I'll work in English while you two experiment in French, Nancy directed. They tried simple substitutions, using the series of numbers for letters of the alphabet, but nothing came of this in either English or French. Next, the group tried transposition, numbering the alphabet with Z for 1 and A for 26. This failed, so they tried various other cryptogram combinations. It seemed hopeless, 
and the group was about to give up when Nancy said, I believe we've been following the wrong trail. It probably is not a code at all, but a serial number of some sort. You mean like the number of an automobile license? Henri asked. Yes, Nancy replied. Or of a legal document. Hannah Gruen, who had been seated on the couch listening, gave a great sigh. It might take you the rest of your lives to find out, she said, rising. Nancy, I suggest that you go to bed and let me serve supper to you in your room. Nancy tried to protest. But both Ellen and Henri backed Hannah up, urging Nancy to rest her ankle, and she finally consented. She was annoyed at having to give up her dancing and teaching temporarily. But she knew Bess would take her classes, and there was still a little time to practice for the charity show. During the evening, Nancy, Mr. Drew, and the Fontaines made a list of everything that might be investigated in regard to a serial number. The list was so long that the lawyer laughed and remarked teasingly that if he were going to help Nancy solve the mystery of the numbers, he would have to give up his practice entirely. At 10 o'clock, Hannah insisted that the gathering break up so that Nancy might get a full night's sleep. She shooed the visitors from the room, made Nancy comfortable, then said good night. Nancy slept well, but was awake early the next morning, eager to continue work on the mysterious numbers. I think I'll go down to the police station and have a talk with Detective Penzer. He's a whiz at solving codes, she said to herself. Her ankle was still swollen and somewhat painful, and she had to hop down to the breakfast table on her other foot. Presently, Hélène and Henri joined her. Both, however, looked very serious. Nancy tried to cheer them up, but they ate little. Finally, she said, Please tell me what you're worrying about. End of chapter 6